Welcome back to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and we're going to start today's episode off with just a little bit of maintenance. Because I've been asking you guys about that, I've been kind of like slightly hinting at uh, taking a little bit too long to show the level up process and you know everything else that I do. I just I call upgrading the weapons and uh, talking to the NPCs and whatever, I call that maintenance, <laughs> and uh, that's what I've nicknamed it in this series. And one piece of maintenance that I want to check on real quick is this. A pleasure to see you. Thank goodness you're safe. I'm still looking for my own purpose. It's not easy by any means, but it's what I must do. Okay, so she has nothing new to say, and I discovered something. Uh, somebody in the comments had let me know that this particular item here, the Chrysalid's Memento, we were actually supposed to take this to her before going past Stormvale and showing the skip, so that's my mistake. We missed out on a little bit of dialogue. Big fail on my part, because I've actually never got that part of the dialogue from her. But we haven't lost sight of the goal. Our big thing with her is we just want her to get to the point where she can upgrade her spirit ashes. So let's see if the blacksmith has, a, uh, if I can talk, a dialogue for her, because I believe that's what triggers it. Well... I took you no matter to lay out your arms. Ah, here we go. About Roderica. The girl you bore here. She's crestfallen and can scarcely swing a blade. But she has a gift for spirit tuning. I saw another one like her long ago. Their eyes share the same hue. Interesting. So, he knows a thing or two about spirit tuning, as or so it would seem... And uh, he seems to know more about her than he leads on, because I cannot establish any kind of connection between these two. I don't know why he knows anything about her at all. I don't know if they've conversed, because she hasn't mentioned him yet. Let's look at our equipment, shall we? I think I already kind of went through this stuff before, but it never hurts to check again. Okay, we need another tier 3 to upgrade this guy. Okay, we need more tier 2s to upgrade that, and then as far as this goes, I don't think I'm going to touch the finger seal. Like, I think I mentioned that in the first episode, actually. We're not going to upgrade our base one, because we're going to pick up another one that's going to strengthen the incantations that we intend to use more of. It's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for... Here we go. You're telling me I possess... Some kind of gift. I don't believe you. But if I do have this talent, and goodness knows it would be my first, I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? I'll ask Master Hugh to teach me. Certainly he does appear intimidating and holds no love for us tarnished. But I know he's trapped here at the round table hold. So I can tell. He's a gentle soul underneath it all. Hmm. Such a gentle prisoner he is, huh? If I do have a talent for spirit tuning, and goodness knows that would be a surprise, I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? I'll ask Master Hugh to teach me. You know, I feel like she is the girl that's like super timid and has no confidence and just seems really average, but then like... The minute she realizes that she's really, really good at something and is incredibly talented and has way more gift than she realized, she suddenly becomes this force to be reckoned with out in the world. Don't you just love those kinds of transformations in people? Back already. Yes, I'm back. The girl. What about her? Are you out of your mind? Who'd stay with an ugly brute who only knows how to smith? Absurd. Besides, she'd never agree to it. I refuse to believe it. I don't doubt you, but I know when something's too good to be true. So if it doesn't make sense so far what I'm doing, I'm really just picking the, the obvious options in these dialogues to try to create this connection. And that 
sword right there. Looks to be the sword that is used by the boss that was at uh, Castle Morn. That looks like the Iron Great Sword to me, which is what that weapon is called. There's another one on the ground right here. I'm certain that that's the weapon. It very much looks like the Dragon Slayer Sword from Berserk. If I do have a tal, I suppose I should. I'll ask Matt. Come on. If I do, I suppose I'll ask Matt. Okay, so that's the end of that. Let's rest at the Grace and see if it reloads. I need you to move. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's upgrade our spirit ashes, people. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. I have you to thank, don't I? For persuading Master Hugh. I can happily announce that he has taught me the noble toil of spirit tuning. I'm as yet unsure of what I might be able to accomplish. But if I might be able to help you all... I'd certainly like to try, and if there's any chance to ease the suffering of my dear men who were grafted, well, I certainly must try. Roderica, the spirit tune apprentice. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Isn't that wonderful? It's like she suddenly has just found who she is, and her purpose. It's so noble. Which would make sense. It would make a lot of sense because her outfit is actually called the, the noble traveling garb. So, let's see what we can do about this. Um, if there's any set of ashes that I would want to upgrade with the Grave Glove Ward, which I suppose I should probably take the time to explain this to you guys, this spirit tuning screen can get a little bit confusing because there's two different kinds of Glove Wards. There's Graves and then there's Ghosts. The Grave ones are for your regular spirit ashes that you pick up all over the world. And then your ghost glove warts are going to be for your ashes that you get for beating bosses and stuff like that. These are uh, considered special ashes, and you can actually see it up there next to the L1 button. But um, I think what I will do is... Here's the thing, Loodle is really good. Like, everybody says a lot of nice things about Loodle. And I've never used Loodle on a character before. Like, I'm pretty sure that catacomb was new to me I had not discovered it even on my original character I've used both of these guys so I want to branch out a little bit I think I want to try to use Loodle but I don't have the runes to upgrade Lootle so let me pop a couple of these and again I know we're going on like eight minutes here of maintenance so my apologies but a lot of people are saying that they want me to include this type of stuff so Oh, and we have a tier two. That's wonderful. Let's do it. And I don't know, man. I I usually upgrade the wolves because they're really good, but I kind of want to branch out and try the skeletons because I know the skeletons are good. Like, they won't die. <laughs> so, but I wonder if demi-human ashes are good. Like, you know what? I'm going to branch out. I'm going to experiment because that's... That's what we're here to do. We're here to learn more about this game. We're here to try new stuff, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do something completely off the wall here, and I'm going to go with the Demi-Humans because I've never used these Ashes, and I kind of want to see how effective they are. So we'll take these as far as we can go, and it looks like plus two is it. Um, by the way, something completely off topic here. There is a, a huge party happening on the first floor of my house, and uh, I hope it's not like super loud like i can hear it through my headphones very clearly um i really hope it doesn't pick up on my audio because i'm sure that could be probably kind of annoying but uh i'll do my best to edit it out just to prevent it from uh being distracting or irritating to you guys not that there's anything wrong with fun right like fun is great fun is good I'm going to pass the time to daytime because we're going to want maximum visibility for the shit that we deal with today. Okay, they are out on the patio right now, laughing their asses off and having a ton of fun. I am certain you guys can probably hear that. All right, so let's see about this. Now, we unlocked a shortcut. So before I go deal with these stupid fucking birds again, let's be smart, huh? By smart, 
let me turn on my lantern so you guys can see because I know that the amount of light and visibility that I can see on the screen right now does not necessarily translate out to the rendered version that you guys will view on YouTube and I'm trying to stay conscious of that and there's one particular thing I want to look at let's see if the hood is here yep there it is wonderful you'll notice we picked up that item beforehand and I'm also going to see this is a time for experimenting I'm going to experiment with this as well so you'll notice we hit the other dog first like we did this one last time and it pulled this guy so let's hit him first and see if it pulls the other one Ah, there we go. That nice little trick that I brought up a couple episodes ago. If you swing the analog stick to the left, like if you tilt the analog stick when you're doing your guard counter, oh my god, that dog looks hilarious. His death face is like, this is a zombie dog we're talking about. This should be morbid, but that's, who the fuck wouldn't laugh at that? That's hilarious. He looks like he's having the time of his life. <laughs> but yes, tilting the analog stick after you break lock on it's great it really works nice like if you're having trouble guard countering some of these smaller enemies like rats and dogs in particular break lock on swivel your analog stick and that guard counter will smash the fuck out of them it's great at least it's been working for me so the crimson hood let's talk about this real quick a hooded cloak of vivid crimson worn by expatriated ex expatriated I tell you, man, some new word enters my vocabulary every time I play one of these FromSoft games. I've never seen that word, ever. Like, that's the first time I've ever seen that word, is in this hood description in this game. Uh, worn by expatriated royalty. Increases vigor. Such cloaks were gifted to those who departed on journeys without specific orders, to faraway lands from which they would never return. In other words, the gift of a cloak made it easier for undesirables to be on their way. Roderick and never once saw the guidance of grace. So this is not just a Crimson Hood. It confirms that it belongs to her. Her name is in it. And it really clashes with our outfit. So unfortunately, I'm not going to wear it, even though it's nice, because it gave us that tiny little extra pinch of health up there that you can see. And you know what? As far as I'm concerned... Any amount of health you can get extra is better because you don't know what's going to be the difference between winning and losing a skirmish. So you're better off just getting as much as you can. Now, we already cleared that over there. This room is where the grafted scion was patrolling with all of his grafted ornaments hanging above our own classic uh, grafted grill out happening here, it would seem. Shit's probably gamey. Now we're going to head off into this direction, and this particular encounter that we're about to do is, uh, well, to be frank, it's ass. It really sucks. It can be quite challenging for a lot of people. And I love that this flail doesn't bounce off of walls. It does not give a shit. If you are attacking in a narrow hallway, you don't bounce. It's great. Well, so far we haven't. We might, if we, like... Okay, so you can. We just got lucky right there. So this part is uh, some serious bullshit. Like, this part in particular is where you really want to be able to have something ranged. Like, these two guys keep walking back and forth, left to right. And I suppose what I could do is I could try to give you guys a better idea of what's going on here by using the tools I have in my bat belt. But uh, these guys... That are, and I showed this from above too. Like I was crawling on the top of the building that we're under right now. I was uh, crawling across the railing and kind of giving you guys like a peek at what's going on. But you have these guys that man these flamethrowers and they don't move. They don't move. All they do is shoot fire at you as soon as you get close. The problem is these guys with the torches. They need to be dealt with because. There should be two of them. Yep, there's the other one way over there. These guys need to be dealt with first. Well, second, technically, because we want to deal with these guys first, since they're just walking and patrolling. 
And of course, he's going to pull a fucking crossbow out. That's fine. We have crossbows. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's time to have some fun. <laughs> um, that's the only thing I did off screen was I went to the different merchants. Oh, yeah, that's it. Come over here, motherfucker. Eat this. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> and you'll notice the guy back there died too. Oh my god. Did you see that? Oh my god. They must not give a shit about their turnover rate at all in this castle. That guy was replaced immediately. Somebody else literally teleported to that thing. That was... That was funny. Somebody's going to have to play that back and zoom in and rewind it or something because that shit is funny. But you'll notice that uh, this is perfect for this situation. I mean literally perfect because it kills them in one hit. We have plenty of ammunition. I got 18 shots with this shit. And if I rest at a grace, I'll have even more because you can only carry 20 of them on a time at a time on you. But... Uh, Oh yeah, and a headshot for sure does it. This is why we upgraded this thing. This is this shit is money right here. Let's see if we can hit this guy too. Oh, come on. Come on, man. I don't have time to sit here and waste these things on you. I need you to die. Bam! <laughs> okay, that's super satisfying. So, we essentially have mended the entire situation. I don't think that guy will blow a horn. I think he's just for fluff. But, wow, and we can totally, like, fast roll with it. I say we keep it on. But, all right, now that we've done that... Okay, he's just going to start shooting a crossbow at us. That is perfectly fine. I don't give a shit about that. And the only reason that guy is shooting at us currently is because... I, I don't know. I guess we technically aggroed him when he manned that cannon. But regardless, it don't matter. Here's what we're going to do. That guy will eventually start kind of like moving. But fear not. Before we finish the rest of this field, we're going to go down here. And I don't think that guy will follow us. He, he essentially, his role tells him to keep shooting the crossbow at us. I don't think he'll come down here. Not in my experience. But... We got rats down here. Yeah, fucking rats. So what I recommend you do for this part is go back down here behind uh, where like the the wine counter is. It looks like wine to me at least. Cured meats and wine. What more could you want? And oh hey, well, that was a big fucking mistake following me up here, pal. So if you sneak the right way, you can get up here and. Oh, there we go. Man, swiveling that analog stick works real nice against the rats. Um, the reason I recommend crawling back there behind the counter is because once you're over here, uh, the room is a little bit more open. Because if you try to fight them, like right here, you can start trekking backwards and suddenly you're in a hallway. And then you're on the steps and the rats are really fucking hard to hit on the steps. And then you're going to run into those, uh, those assholes with the crossbows out there. And who wants that, right? Okay. Fireproof dried liver, so we have some more fire resistance. So this one right here only requires one stone sword key. And we've picked up several since we last ran out. So we are definitely going to use this one. Check our surroundings. There we go. This is the one we're going to upgrade. The God Slayer's Seal. And the Godskin Prayer Book. So, it is not coincidence that these things are found together. So, our current scaling is a C. This one has a C too, but we don't have the faith for this thing. We're going to have to upgrade our faith and get to the point where we can use it. Um, I can start going hardcore faith at this point and invest the necessary points until we can use this thing. Because we have exactly enough strength to be able to use our hand ballista while two-handing it. And that's all that matters. You don't need to one-hand it because... Here's the thing. Work harder, or work smarter, not harder. Because if you were to keep investing strength until you can one-hand this thing, 
you'd be biting yourself in the ass if you're on a build that requires more dexterity than strength. You should only invest the necessary stats to be able to two-hand this thing because you're not even able to one-hand it in the first place. This weapon can only be shot while two-handing, so only invest the bare minimum it takes to use it at all with two hands. And then we're going to invest until we can use this thing because it's got the same exact scaling, but you can see down in the passive effects it boosts the God Slayer incantations, which we're going to be using like Black Fireball and stuff like that, and we're going to be using a couple different Black Fire abilities that are super useful against literally everything in this game. And then we picked up... Where is it? Here it is. The Godskin Prayer Book. So I like to read these before we give them away. Prayer Book Bound in Supple Skin. Incantations of the God Slaying Black Flame are written within. Can be given to a learned cleric to gain access to the following incantations. Black Flame and Black Flame Blade. So, Black Flame Blade is a scam. That ability is has not been very useful to me at all. We forgot to give the bell bearing to the damn maidens at the round table hold. I'm an idiot. But, Black Flame, that's what we want. That is good shit. It's going to make short work of a lot of stuff once we can use it. And it's just really damn good. So, I'm glad we got those. Sneaky sneaky. We are safe for now. I do not want to fall off. Jeez, that was close. So let's see what else we got. No more items over here. Okay. Alright, so. Be smart right here. Once you drop down right here, it will lead to another grace, which is going to be directly above the exact spot we started at. And it will allow us to loot those items that were in front of the gate. When I had told you guys at the start of this adventure through Stormvale that it wasn't really worth it to have him raise the front gate and walk through the entrance because those items are not really worth dying for. And when we go pick them up, you're going to realize that. But dropping down right here, you will not be able to get back up through the same way. If you want to drop down right here and loot that item and kill these guys, and go get the items in front of the gate that are down there, which we can kind of see them from here. There's one at least. You're going to have to go back through this field here. Like you're going to have to go through all those assholes, which is fine. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go up this ladder real quick. And the part that we're about to come up on right here, there's going to be a couple more banished knights and... Uh, it's going to be two of them at once during one part, which is kind of annoying, but I'll show you guys how to deal with that. And then this railing up here, I believe this is where we were sneaking around through the border. Or at least, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. You'll see exactly where I was talking about. And you can drop down safely right here if you want to. I don't consider this a strategic spot to drop down because... You still have all these guys in the field to deal with. And there's a really badass, like, new enemy over there that we've not encountered yet in this playthrough. So this is the double spot. This is, uh... This is bad news. I'm telling you right now, this part really sucks. You need to do your absolute best to try and kill this one with the halberd before the other one comes over here and gives you a hard time. So, just make note of that. We can see the one with the shield sitting down there. So he's got a great sword and a shield. And he's one of the ones that can shoot that flaming fire attack that fans out and does a shit ton of damage. It'll kill you really fast. So what I recommend you do is you're going to want to do all of your buffs and whatnot first. So I'm going to grease up. And I'm going to do this. And what I will do is... Shoot the fuck out of this guy first. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Okay. Reload time sucks, but... Assuming he whiffs on you like he did me right there. Holy shit. That was amazing. Um, I wouldn't consider that a good use of our bolts right there because, as you can see, this guy didn't move at all. Like, if you just pull that guy with, like, a throwing knife or something like that... 
you know, do your thing. Circle around, backstab him, whatever you want to do to get rid of him. The thing is, if you get too close while you're fighting the guy with a halberd, that's when this guy will show up and cause trouble. And when you have both of them on you at the same time, it's going to get hairy. It really is shitty. So, let's shoot this guy. He runs too fast for me to try to get a second shot and safely reload, so let's do our thing and just smash him. Give me your shield. I want it really bad. I spent like 30 minutes trying to farm it off screen in between now and the last episode, and I did not get it. Bullshit. Check every corner because we are diligent souls players. Now, right here, this part is probably the worst bit of it. So, I mean, we're gonna do it. Like, we're gonna end up coming through here and dealing with this part, but. Oh, yeah. These guys here. So, any of the guys that you see, like, manning these ballistas, like those guys, that shit explodes. It's not just arrows they're firing at you, like, they fire exploding bolts. And it's bad. It'll kill you real fast. So, you got big guy right here, so kill that guy as fast as you can. Oh. Nothing gets through shield barricade. Nothing. Well, some things do, but not these guys. And from here, we're just gonna keep taking the ladders. That's all we're doing. Just going our way up. Damn, that cold brew is good, man. That's what I do, just to give you guys a visual. Anytime I'm climbing a ladder, I'm probably simultaneously sipping on my cold brew. And no, I don't mean beer. I'm allergic to alcohol. I do not drink. But cold brew coffee. It is the future. It's really fucking good. You know, that would have been a really nice guard counter, but you missed. That is twice now, in the same, like, two minutes that that's happened, the guy completely whiffs and misses us when they try to stab us. That's not a complaint. I'm a huge fan. Nice. We got another cookbook. Let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see what The Rock is cooking with this one. Here we go. Tier 10. Storming Bone Arrow. Those are a lot of fun. <laughs> We're gonna play with those. I'm gonna show you guys... A real nice use for those things in certain situations. And uh, not only will it be incredibly humorous, but it'll be a lot of fun too. So I'm trying to think of what I should do for this part. Um, there's two different ways we can go. One way is going to be out here on the roof, drop down in there, get the item, deal with all this bullshit in the field. Um. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to keep pressing on in the other direction because it's going to take us quite far down below, but I believe that to be the smartest direction to go in. And it's not like we can't get back up either. We can just drop down right there, take the ladder again. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Let me see here. If I know what I'm talking about, that is. It's, this is an assumption, ladies and gentlemen. I think, okay, and that's just to drop down if you had come the other way. That's what it is. Okay, so I am confused. We do, in fact, need to keep going this way. Because the way that I'm thinking of is going to be where the jars are. The brothers and sisters of Alexander, whom we're going to for sure kill, because they are not like him. They're quite hostile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we need to head this way. We're going to go to the Grace, and that is where we're going to need to do our thing. So for this part, you can do a Descend Attack right there, basically kill him almost right away. Um, doesn't matter. Or you can just drop down and wax him. It's up to you. Oh boy, we got one of those shiny things. We're going to get that big guy to break it so we can get the item. I think it's Smithing Stone. Of which tier, I don't recall. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So this part, this is where our sneaky, dark, 
paladin slash confessor type build is at its peak. It's pretty nice. Being able to sneak around and stuff like this. Now, there's a big net. See, there's the dog. For some reason, he did not come up on the, the telescope. But. Sneaky, sneaky, nonetheless. And there's the other two asshole fire bird things that just can go to hell. Not worried about them. I'm worried about this. This here is a big old checkpoint. Super important. And I know what you're thinking. Look, a shortcut. It's really not. <laughs> it only takes you up like one level. So this is going to be what we use to get to the area that I was just confused about a second ago. We're going to do a little bit more platforming and stuff too because that's what it's going to take to get down to the other secret area that took me forever to figure out how to get to. So, here's our miniature pots and there's what I want. Oh, come here. Bam, Stormcaller. So, and another Grace. Hallelujah. That's our second Storm Ash of War that we've got. And I just want to take a look at them for just a second. First one we got was this, Storm Assault. And this is the one that was down by the Crucible Knight, Scarab. And it's really good. Like, this can be super good for, like, smaller enemies that don't have a whole lot of poise. Because using the Wind Attack not only will very slightly and briefly stagger smaller enemies with no poise but uh, the actual attack that you do when you chain in the other the actual attack of the weapon art it hits pretty hard and can hit multiple enemies at once this this is pretty decent to have on like a halberd or something and then stormcaller this is exactly what the banished knight uses so when you see them doing that thing where they're like spinning the weapon around or whatever I don't think you can shoot forward like they can, as you had clearly saw, because I absolutely forced everyone to pay attention to it by slowing it down in the previous episode. Um, this ability can be quite useful for lots of weapons. So, just keep that in mind. If you like the way, the aesthetic of like the Bandish Knight attacks and stuff, Check that out. It's uh, it's a lot of fun to use. And we got Kukri's. You'll notice those went straight to my box. Do you know why? Because one of my pit stops off screen when I was buying those Ballista is uh, I bought a bunch of Kukri too. As many as I could fit. Because they're wonderful to have at all times. So let's experiment. What I normally do is I run up to these things and I just start smashing them apart like some kind of monster. But I want to see what happens when you pull them. Yes, indeed. I knew that was going to happen. It totally woke up the big pot. So, this is bad, right? Like, this guy is essentially like a mean version of Alexander, and they are pretty strong. I'm going to bubble up for this part. Now, let's go pot versus pot. See what happens. Okay, that did alright. Oh, shit. Wrong weapon. So, oh yeah, my goodness, strike damage is like, that is it for these guys. Holy shit. Alright, take notice, or take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. If you use slash damage, like regular swords, or spears, like thrust damage against these guys, it goes completely different than that, than what you just saw. Strike damage, 100% is the answer for these little bastards. Oh, yeah. Look at this dude looking at me with his arms crossed like... What are you gonna do, solo me? Whatever. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna touch you since you're not trying to fight me. Okay. Cracked pot. Fuck yeah. Can add to our ammunition supply. Times two. I think I mentioned that before we went in here, I mentioned that we were gonna find two of these in here, and I guess that's the exact spot. That you find them but I want to look 
at what we found. So we got the living jar shard, a fragment of a living jar, hardened after its death, material used for crafting items. Such fragments command a high price due to the magical power locked within. This leaves the living jars unfortunate targets for poachers. That does make me feel slightly bad for them. And then the other thing we got was like a flesh item. It was a, a dumpling of some sort, I think is what it said. Perhaps. Maybe it's under the tools. Here we go. This is a consumable. Restores HP but causes poison buildup. Yeah, so this. It's very similar to the warming stone. It's, it's got the same effect. It will heal you to almost the same exact duration. Except the problem is you get poisoned when you use it. Now, you can negate that if you equip all of your best poison-resistant gear, or just heal and pop one of these, you know. But it's good for emergency situations where you absolutely need a heal, and you don't have an incantation, you don't have, uh, you don't have warming stones, you're out of Estus, you know, the same shit that just happens to all of us, no matter how good we are at these games, right? Um, it happens. But you can always pop that item and heal. So instead of running directly forward, to get the grace, we're going to press on in this direction. We're going to jump onto this railing, follow it around to the end, and here we go. Nice. So in here, there's going to be some enemies. Um, let me look around and make sure I know where I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, there's another knight over there, as well as a stormhawk, and we can get back up here, so let's jump down. Not a big deal. So, 150%. Get rid of the bird first. There we go. Wow, the poise. Come on. Ah. <sighs> Yes, something I can guard counter. I really hate that the blades and that attack literally goes right behind you. Like, it's so annoying. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. And you'll notice how we experimented with the sleep effect on these guys, right? Like, they somehow are able to just completely wipe it off. I don't know why that is, because... Let's experiment real quick. Let's make just one of these. I'm going to hit him with it. Okay, I already have it on my bar. Good. Oh, I don't have any FP. Here we go. So let's see what happens with this guy. So he's asleep, right? But then he, like, wiped it off. Maybe it's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Shoo, shield barricade, man. I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, fire, fire, fire. There we go. Get this lump of flesh. Three of them. We are having steak tonight. God, that's disgusting. Why did I say that? Alright. Anywho, we're going to go this way first. There's guys in here. And they're in kind of strange spots. Like, they'll throw the rocks at you and whatever, and... Let's vandalize their property in good faith. Here we go. So... Ah, yes. And then we're gonna head off that way, and then there's gonna be some bats, and it's gonna suck. We're gonna do it anyway. Boom! There we go. We got three of those. So now we can get our ballista to the next level, should we choose, and I say we choose, because that thing is priceless in both entertainment and effectiveness, as you've noticed. Sneaky, sneaky. Put your lanterns on. Here we go. So this guy here, he'll stand up, give you a hard time. 
and then that guy will start throwing fire pots at you. So let's do our due diligence and get rid of these clowns. Oh my goodness. That was embarrassing. What an odd place he's in. So, doesn't matter that these guys are awake and functional now. Because, for one, they clearly don't know how to get up the fucking steps, which is pretty funny. Stupid-ass rock. Oh, you are going to come up here. Fine with me. You can give me your stupid straight sword if you want. I don't really want it, but... Appreciate you. We'll just get them down, one by one. Whether they intend to hurt us or not is no concern of mine. They gotta go. Okay, so the running star, just a little bit of momentum that you get from doing the running light attack is enough to finish them in one hit. Ah! You think you're messing with, you dumb animal? Great. We did it. We get a developer message. Surely what you seek is somewhere close by. That is Roger. Do you recognize him? Hmm. I think what we seek is indeed close by. Do you know why? Oh, fuck yeah. That's exactly what we needed. Because it is indeed down there. This is actually going to be a spot that we saw, briefly. And... Well, let's see. We didn't unlock any kind of shortcut or anything. So, it's not like we won't be able to get back. We should unlock a, another shortcut, as a matter of fact, to the grace that we just unlocked. That's what this should lead to. And we saw this while we were dropping down near the Hawks. So, over there, on those platforms, this is where we dropped down to get to the Crucible Knight from up there. And I had mentioned on the way down over there that we were going to get this item. Unfortunately, you can't just grab it. You do have to be kind of stupid and dangerous and get up on the ledge. Just don't die. Hello. Interesting. So that is the giant bridge in Limgrave that leads to the very first tower that we're going to go to. That's just, looks like that's what it's a painting of. With the shoreline and everything. Which is where box bullies were. Oh boy, I don't like this part. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Maybe these stupid rainbow stones. Eeh. So they shouldn't aggro right now, but there are bats down there that are a little bit tricky to deal with. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the shit. Alright, I don't... That one's eyes are glowing. But I don't think that's because he's going to give us extra runes. I think that's just because it's nighttime and they're bats. Come on. Get your ass up here. Well, doesn't look like he can or will. Please try, though. That's it. I'm your guy. Come on. Come on. Seriously? That, fine. Whatever. We're not going to make the same mistake with this one. Feel me? Terrible way to kill something. Oh, is there any more? There should just be two. I only recall there being two. Alright, let's be like... Ninja with this one. And miss completely, right? Because that's what ninjas do. Whatever. I'm just going to run down here and handle this guy. With what, though? I'm out of everything. Um, 
Oh, he's not going to wait for me to, like, reload. But he doesn't seem to be able to get up here, so... Fine with me. There's one more bat right here. Please, please don't run in there and try to grab this, knowing that there's this bat hanging from the ceiling, because that's, like, kind of dumb, you know? Charge our fireball, because... This guy deserves to be one shot, and we got more leaves, so we can make more exalted flesh. Good shit. Alright, man, I've had enough of you. I hope that hurt as bad as it looked. Alright, and then we're just gonna keep going further and further and further down into this shithole, and... I'm basically out of everything, so, uh, essentially we're going to fight another ulcerated tree spirit down here. And that one at the bottom of this place is every bit as challenging as the one that is at the bottom of the Fringe Folk Hero's Grave. Like, I mean, he is 100% just as challenging. Got just as much health, all the bullshit that you can think of. And there are some pesky rats on the way to him. Which is not a big deal. We can handle them. But I don't think I'm going to be able to beat this guy, I'm being 100% honest. I mean, I'm going to try my damnedest for sure. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Come on. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, that that's the trick, guys. That's a trick with that, like... What the hell happened down here? So we read an item description that talks about... I think it was one of those shields that talks about a secret that's hidden deep down beneath this place. And th this is it. This is definitely what that was talking about and referring to. But, like, these, these statues and stuff... Like, was it the ulcerated tree spirit that did this and caused this damage down here? I mean, what the hell? And then you've got, like, the... This right here should be reminding people of Bloodborne, this statue that's got, like, the pot falling, because that cutscene in Bloodborne, the really, really high-resolution, high-quality, like, you know, 3D-crafted one, you know the one I'm talking about, that shows the hunter that's going through that chalice dungeon, and he gets to the statue that's pouring the, uh, from the pot, and it's dripping down onto the beast skull, which I believe belonged to Lawrence, and... I wonder what's with the reoccurring theme of these statues that are pouring with the pot. Like, what is that? Why is it so relevant? Oh, hi. Could finish you off like that, but I'd rather hurt you a little more because I don't like you. was not ready to put that guy down with a critical. He didn't deserve that. He deserved a little more pain. So you hear the twinkle, right? This scarab is going to give us some of our blue flask back. I think. Oh no, it gave us Rancor Call. Great. Which, that is a, a sorcery, I believe. Yep, that is not... An incantation that requires intelligence. But it essentially does exactly what that pot did. And if y'all recall, that was wicked. Like, those pots were super effective. We were hitting for a, a shit ton of damage on Margit with those things. Okay. I feel like my brain is telling me that there's another twinkle. Like, I can hear it, but I don't see it. Oh, what I wouldn't give for my damn bubble right now. Yuck. Okay. Um, I am probably going to die to this thing. I'm just being straightforward with you guys. But, uh... Let's do our due diligence here. And let's equip... Kukris, for sure, because they do a lot of damage. Let's make some fire pots. And we can now hold eight of them, so all eight are going to go to my fire pots. You best believe it. And let's do this. 
No, I don't want to make them. I want to use it. Let's use it. All right. Let's buff up. Here we go. Oh, this thing's a pain in the ass. Here we go. Let's get it. Oh, fuck. Of course he can hurt you coming out of the ground. That is so stupid. Oh, my goodness. All right, here we go. Here we go. That should not reach me back here. Wonderful. Alright. Oh, and then the double. Here we go. Would love to try to get a bleed. Oh, come on. There's no way that hit me. That was so late. Alright. I'm going to try to be like... As smart as I can be. Oh, shit. <sighs> Thought it was the breath attack. Okay, and then the double smash. Something like that. Heal. Okay, I don't want to get greedy. And get back. Okay. Oh, come on. That is so fucking dumb, man. <sighs> okay. Oh, fuck me. This thing is being such an asshole right now. I feel like he's doing everything that I don't want him to do. E. All right. That's fine. I'm just going to use fire pots, bro. Like, I ain't worried about you. <laughs> and one more. There we go. Get a hit here and there. He's... Fuck. He's kind of annoying to proc bleed on. Like, I hit him with a couple Kukris, and I smacked him with my weapon. And he would not fucking get bled. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're a shitbag, man. That's it. Oh man, that sucks. Here we go. Oh yeah, fuck you. And get our customary golden seed that we get for beating every single one of those terrible things. Some butterflies I like. Damn, I feel really good about that. Another stone sword key, hell yeah. I never beat that guy on the first try, so that felt good. And now, are you guys ready for the treat? Check this shit out. This is what they were talking about that was down below. Look at this giant alien-faced skull thing that definitely has a nose and two eyes. There's nothing going on down in these eyes. Like, they, like the eyeballs are gone. Third eyeball up here that is very much present. Damn. And then it looks like... I don't think this is rock. I'm pretty sure that all of this going into the mountain, like inside the wall, is part of this thing's body. Like it has an upside down head on it or something. Maybe this is the mouth? And those are the eyes? And then the head fans out and then there are like tentacles coming out of it. See? Look. It's like the longer you look at it, the worse it gets. And these tentacles... They're thorny and stuff. So it's like... They have teeth and stuff on them. This is like eldritch truth shit from Bloodborne. This is a whack. So it's like whatever this was... It was petrified and turned to stone, and it's just this dead thing down at the bottom of Stormvale. And I would love to learn more about it. We get the Prince of Death's puzzle. This is a 
pretty significant item. We're going to talk about the lore on this item real quick. So, this raises your vitality, which specifically affects... It raises it a lot, too. Like, from 233 to 323, that's quite a bit. And what your vitality does is it boosts your resistance to death blight. A fetid puzzle taken from facial flesh raises vitality. Vitality governs resistance to the effects of death. It is said that this puzzle came from the visage of the Prince of Death, he who used to be called Godwin. As first dead of the demigods, it's said he's buried deep under the capital at the Erd Tree's roots. Very interesting. So, I want to point something out about that lore description. It says his corpse can be found buried at the bottom of the capital by the Erd Tree's roots, and you're going to think that that's this, because it says the capital and... I want to explain something to you guys, though. The Stormvale, Cap Storm Stormvale Castle is not the capital, right? Like, the corpse that we're going to be talking about that's called the Prince of Death, we're going to find that way later beneath Landell, which is the actual capital. Um, it's called Landell Capital City. And finding this down here, it's going to make a lot of people, like, get confused. They're going to think it clicks. They're going to be like, oh my god, this has to be Godwin. This is the Prince of Death. It's not. This is an entirely other entity. I don't know what the fuck this thing is, but I want to know. I want to know more about it. So, all right. Let's do our thing. We've spent a lot of time down in this terrible place looking at this terrible thing. And uh, it's time to go back, like, where the sun is. You know what I mean? You guys feel the way I'm feeling right now? I think it's time to get out of here. Oh, yeah, I'm on a ladder. Need my coffee. Oh shit, that's good. I drink, I drink the cold brew that has, uh, it's made with oat milk and just a tiny bit of mocha. Cause I don't like overly sweet coffee. I like, I like there to be some kind of flavor, and uh, maybe a little bit of creaminess, like maybe some kind of almond milk or oat milk or something. No dairy, and uh, it's just so good. It goes down real good. Alright, we made it up the painful ladder. And now, we're going to drop back down into the castle. And we're going to be at our next stone imp here. or stone. Did I call this thing a stone golem before? I didn't mean to do that. It's a fanged imp. And then this is just the grafted scion room. Like, this is the main building. Again, this is just the other doorway we could have gone out. So let's loot this real quick. Hell yeah. Somber smithing stones. So let's use our key to get in here. And we're going to pick up a really, really damn good weapon in here. Got two big guys, though. Oh, I don't have anything for barricade shield. That's fine. We'll have to substitute for more displacement. Come on. Come on. Fine. Lord Jesus. <sighs> there we go. Yeah. That's all I see. That's all I needed was one hit, man. Damn. Give me that. Not a very good shield. Give me that. That's what I wanted. Misericord. It's uh, got a very high crit rate on it. And then these look like the damn Master Sword from The Legend of Zelda. I think that's a pretty cool little detail. And then the Iron Wet Blade. This is the super duper important item in this room that's worth spending that key on. Okay, Grant's Choice of Affinity Upgrade a Weapon. So this is an essential item. It's not even close to the only one you will get of its kind. There are many different kinds of wet blades in this game. The iron one just happens to be the first one that we pick up in this playthrough. When applying an affinity using Ashes of War, an additional affinity of heavy, keen, or quality can be chosen. So this will allow us to change the scaling of our weapon. That is incredibly important in your playthrough like if there's one thing that you absolutely cannot pass up in Stormvale it's this because this is going to govern your damage output for basically the rest of your playthrough 
And then this is the spot with this guy where I'm pretty sure I hit him with arrows before because like up there on this bridge is where the Banished Knight patrols with the other guy that has the fire pole thing and uh, that Banished Knight is the one that flew around the corner and smashed me into the next dimension. Nice, nice, nice. Holy shit. I feel like this was a good episode, man. We made a lot of progress. Okay, I don't want to go back up there. That's going to lead to the other graves. Don't want to go out here. That's where the dogs were. Okay. Checked everywhere. I think we're doing good. We got... We essentially have already covered the two most difficult places to find in Stormvale. We covered the place down below with the Crucible Knight, and then we covered the place down below with the Ulcerated Tree Spirit. And those are your two most troublesome places to find in this entire level. So now what we're going to do is watch out for these fire barrels, man. Like, those guys that shoot the crossbows, they'll blow these barrels the fuck up and kill you. It does a lot of damage. So we're just going to sneaky sneaky. And we'll make our way up here. And there's a guy sitting down, guarding this item. And we're just going to murder him. Big axe guy. He just looks scary. That's all it is. And the game gives you these fire arrows right here. I think that's pretty deliberate. I think they did that on purpose. Because you can hit the fire barrels that are conveniently placed near all the enemies. And, uh... This is exceptionally useful against the big guy out there with the big-ass sword that's near the dog. But we're going to use him to break open that statue first. Hi, gentlemen. Would you care to come up here and fight? Well, I really don't recommend... Do you see how fast they run to those things? Okay, listen, man. Let me do this. Oh my god, I didn't move in time. Whatever. Get rid of these guys. I bought so many Kukri, I don't care to waste them. Nice. <laughs> okay, so this guy is all by himself, so I'm just going to whip his ass. Pick up these mushrooms, hell yeah. Smoldering butterflies, hell yeah, I'll take it all. Alright, I still recommend you try to crouch, sneak through here, because in the event that you missed the, uh, shit. In the event that you missed the, uh, the guys with the poles that sound the alarm, you never know. Because I promise you, as soon as they sound that alarm, like, I'm not going to demonstrate that because I'm not an idiot. Like, I don't care how good you are at this game. I don't care how high your damage is at this point. Can't believe I missed you. I don't care about any of that stuff. As soon as that guy blows that horn and every single one of these assholes is, like, right up in your shit trying to kill you, that's a tough situation to get out of. It's, uh... I mean, you either run away and rethink your strategy and let them de-aggro, or you die. Those are pretty much your options. And no, you can't backstab these guys while they're on this thing. Well, I got two pieces of their armor. Okay, I will grab this. But I'm not going any further down in that direction. We're going to save that for another time. Probably the next episode. I really thought I was going to get to Godric in this episode, but that is 100% not the case. Alright. And we are going to go in here and get this painting, though. So, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. You don't see a thing. Okay. I'm going to do my best to collect all of these paintings. So, we got the Prophecy painting. Pretty cool. We take a look at what it depicts, and it looks very much to be like Landell. I don't see the Erd tree in this painting. Could be that big gold thing behind the castle. That could be the Erd tree in this painting, but can't be entirely certain. 
So, let's be smart about this. And let's Kukri the big dog. Oh my goodness. So this guy is pretty tough. <laughs> Come on. There we go. Okay, I do not. Oh! Come on. Come on. Come on. Hit the fucking thing, man. Break it. Uh, yeah, that's what I need you to do, man. I need you to do that big chop attack. Ooh! So maybe he can't. Perhaps I have to, uh. Lure a giant in here or something, maybe. Yeah, it looks like this guy can't break this thing. That's strange. Huh. Maybe I have to use an explosive bolt or something. Alright. Regardless. Let's see what we can do about this guy. So this guy can be backstabbed. And he can also be bled. However, he's resistant to strike damage, so I'm not doing very good damage against this guy. So it's kind of poor to show. But I think what this guy is weak to is thrust damage. So if I can if I can hit this dumbass. There we go. 163 with a throwing knife? Yeah, that's pretty good. Except he dodges. Like a dick. There we go. And you hit him in the head. Bam. There we go. Oh, yeah. And then the bleed. <laughs> that's a hell of a way to finish that guy. Man. I thought for sure that guy could break this thing, but I guess not. What am I going to do? wonder if an explosion will break it, like... Hmm. I'm going to have to experiment with that one. Well, anywho... Ooh, I can't believe I forgot to grab this. There we go. All right. Okay, you can drop down right here, by the way. Like, there's nothing stopping you from dropping down right there. You might lose, like, half your health or something. Or you can use the Assassin's Approach and take no fall damage, but regardless. Okay, great. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to go ahead and rest at this grace, and yes, all the enemies that we just bust our ass killing, they are going to come back, which is shitty, but um, all right. That was a killer episode, ladies and gentlemen. I think we covered a lot of content. We got to both of the most difficult areas to reach in this entire legacy dungeon and uh it didn't give us a whole lot of trouble i'm really surprised i didn't die in this part because like it doesn't make sense to me that i died in the previous episode more than once because that shit wasn't even hard like the stuff we did today is the nasty hairy parts like these are the doozies that we went through today and i don't know maybe i got some extra sleep and might just be on my game but that's going to do it for this one Thank you guys so much for continuing to join me on our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.